Welcome to the GSMC Pets Podcast, the show that caters to pet lovers of all kinds. We'll talk about pets on social media, pets doing amazing things, and how to take care of the pets in your life. Whether your pet is a dog, a cat, a llama, hamster, reptile, or something more exotic, you'll find educational and entertaining information on the GSMC Pets Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Pets Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alex Fletes. I'm here to discuss with you guys everything pet-related, from the mundane to the extreme. And I wanted to start with something really interesting that we just don't see very much of. So, in the Cincinnati Zoo, Fiona the Hippo, uh, usually a very docile creature, hippos, are so so fascinating when getting to observe up close uh this lovely hippo she she is just bouncing through the water just like nobody's business this is a really amazing video that uh they posted on their facebook page uh and thanks to the display case you know uh, of her enclosure we're able to see how she actually bounces up and down through the water and she just literally trots from one end of the cage to the other so quickly which just brings up so many fascinating topics about hippos in general uh one thing i really want to discuss is just the method how she just bounces through the water and it's actually interesting that hippos actually do trot much like horses hippos are fascinating creatures simply that they are completely unassuming i never would have expected a hippo to be able to move up to about 19 miles an hour when trotting that's actually really fascinating to me uh not only that but their jaw strength is almost 2,000 pounds and wow also hippos are apparently incredibly dangerous so despite the fact that these are big hoofed animals that can move relatively quickly and gracefully bounce through the water like i'm seeing here if you get the chance you need to see this video it's really really great she's just like soaring like superman style as she raises up through the water it's it's actually really amazing uh these creatures are just it's some of the amazing parts about nature is how unassuming or how just amazing it can be uh one thing i actually found out about hippos i didn't realize they had web footing i mean you wouldn't even see this just from the movement but these big creatures with small hooves have webbed footing yet they're not very good swimmers but i think fiona here is kind of giving that theory a run for its money uh it's just really amazing uh just how animals can be how they can sort of subvert our expectations um you know animals have to be one of the most remarkable things on this planet and uh from any little animal with uh you know their quirks to even the largest ones there's just something amazing about the things we can do when we get the chance to observe them uh one thing that's just kind of interesting to me though is that uh with hippos you know if you've ever seen the way hippo actually you know uses its jaw strength its jaw strength uh like i said about two thousand pounds worth of jaw strength uh, there's a really great video of watching hippos smashing a, a watermelon just with, with a single chomp. Uh, these creatures are amazing. Uh, so, uh, man, I'm sorry. I'm just really captivated by this hippo. She's Fiona is just bouncing. Like, the way she... The way her motions move, if you get a chance to see this really amazing video, she's actually diving down. Like, she's not floating or anything. She's actually performing a diving maneuver. If you've ever, you know, seen a professional diver or you've seen Olympic swimmers, her whole body goes straight. Like, she doesn't move at all. She just rises and dives. It's actually really amazing. Where if you could put this side by side to an Olympic swimmer, you know, I'm not going to say she's winning any gold medals, but she's winning a gold medal in my heart today. And it's really fascinating. She simply actually, like, her whole body straightens and then she just dives down like a person. And it's amazing. Uh, A lot of things that we do as people, we've actually imitated from animals and apparently vice versa. 
Uh, there's several times of animals actually uh, imitating from people and learning from us. Uh, crows are definitely going to be a great example, but that's uh, neither here nor there. But uh, it's really amazing to watch, and I'd love to see more of what hippos are capable of. It's it's a shame that uh, in captivity, you know, we don't really get to see this kind of activity from an animal like this. So this is actually a treat just in itself. At my local uh, my local uh, animal institute. Uh, we actually do have uh, a few animals like this, but, you know, it's like it is with any other type of place. You know, they're very, you know, sluggish, lethargic, and all that stuff. And that's just kind of the nature of some of these places. But it doesn't always have to be that way. Uh, you know, a lot of times we go to places like zoos and kind of expect, like, the lions to be on the prowl. And, you know, the zebras and giraffes to be galloping. Uh, but that's just that's just not the case. And I definitely think that uh, Fiona here is just one of the rare examples of, man, look at her go. Um, but it, it's pretty fascinating the way this is. And I wonder if even this uh, enclosure would be able to handle Fiona moving like this on a regular basis. But the way she moves really is impressive. Um, you know, Olympic swimmers, they kind of have this really cool motion, like they have to the way they have to move their bodies in very specific, uh, in very specific, uh, ways. They have to, like, uh, be able to hold their bodies. They don't even, like, use their feet sometimes. It's, it's really crazy. And looking at Fiona, I, I see that form. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. Uh, but that's just kind of the majesty of animals. Even the biggest, you know, creatures we think, oh man, that thing couldn't do a thing. Um, this thing can run about 19 miles an hour. That is about as fast as Usain Bolt, I believe. So humans can't even move this fast. Humans, on average, can go maybe, maybe if they train, maybe about 15 miles an hour. And I think that's really pushing it. But I believe, last I checked, Usain Bolt's record was 19 miles an hour. That was his fastest speed. But even then, that's an Olympic level. And these big creatures, these creatures that weigh a good few tons, I'd say... Uh, somewhere in the, uh, who, um, 4,000 is maybe an average. Uh, these, these big creatures are moving at natural a 19 mile an hour. That is crazy. Uh, that's just how deceitful that, you know, nature can be if we don't give it enough time to learn about it. Uh, but would I say that these are pets? Definitely not. But I just had to discuss Fiona because she is utterly majestic in the water. Uh, you know, I, I don't want this to be about just, you know, pets because, you know, uh, your dogs, cats are great. But I also want to make sure that you guys know that uh, there is a difference, but we can still learn from animals wild and in captivity as well. And Miss, uh, Miss Fiona here is definitely one of the prime examples of that. The way she glides through this clear blue water and just like splashes around, it's, it's honestly a sight to behold. Uh, one thing I also find interesting is that, um, uh, hippos, their jaws are on a hinge. So if you've ever opened a door or you've ever perhaps, uh, you know, like, open like a, a hinge jar, you know, just the way it opens completely up. That's a hippo's jaw, too. Uh, that's actually very terrifying now that I'm looking at it and, like, really thinking about it. It's fairly terrifying. And if I remember correctly, I don't even think... Well, they're mostly... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think hippos are omnivores, but... Uh, no, they're, they're mostly herbivores, so they'll be eating leaves. But the mostly is slightly concerning because I do believe that the mortality rate from wild hippos are uh, a bit higher than sharks, I believe. They, they, hippos are incredibly powerful and very dangerous creatures. So it's really amazing when we get the chance to observe one in the captivity or even in the wild like this doing this kind of activity. Uh, it really is fascinating that nature has a creature like this. Uh, I do think it's important that we as people should know and be educated about animals because all too often uh, there are several instances there are several instances of uh, people and animals uh, meeting that just uh, it doesn't go well simply because people are completely unaware or unassuming of what these creatures are capable of. It's really fascinating. 
uh, just to watch this. If you get a chance, go look up uh, Fiona the Hippo. She just was gliding like a beautiful creature rising out of the water. But yeah, that's 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 where I'm going to leave you guys for right now on this topic. Uh, uh, for right now, uh, we're going to transition though. Uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, listening, and we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. But until that happens, um, please enjoy these messages. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back. As we previously discussed, we were just gushing over Fiona the Hippo at the Cincinnati Zoo. And I wanted to discuss also some interesting things that places like zoos have done. Uh, for example, it's very rare that we actually get to see an animal such as a hippo in such a ecstatic and, well, fully energized state like that due to the conditions of zoos. Uh, one thing that I do think is interesting uh, about getting to observe animals is is one thing that a lot of people have done lately are uh, cameras, cameras at zoos, because, you know, not everyone can make it all the way out to Cincinnati or San Diego and see some of the amazing animals out there. Uh, but one thing that I think is really great, especially for any serious animal lovers out there, are the live cams that they have put up for uh, animals at the zoo. Uh, you know, some people do this for in the wild or maybe in rehabilitation as well. Uh, I believe there was a bald eagle or, uh, I think even some bats in incubation for a while that were, uh, being live streamed. And that's honestly a really great, uh, feature to have. And the San Diego Zoo actually does have a few of these live cams that are pretty fascinating for animals we don't typically get to see. Um, my personal favorite is the baboon cam because... Honestly, I'm a big monkey fan. I think monkeys are really interesting. And just because, you know, you get to see an interesting animal uh, doesn't mean they're always going to be interesting 24-7. I mean, let's put a camera on you uh, 24-7 and see every interesting thing you do of your life. But that's neither here nor there. One thing I will find that is incredibly interesting about this concept is that it does give us a peek into the habits of some of these animals and... You know, sometimes there's just that unexpected moment of them, but it also does give us a moment to really learn and experience animals and what they do. Um, zoos are a very fascinating place. Zoos are the kind of place where you grow up and it's that one place you have where you get to see all those animals you're kooky about as a kid. Uh, monkeys, bears, lions, elephants. Who doesn't love a good elephant? Um, and I love these cams. The polar bear cam is actually really interesting, though, uh, simply because we live in North America. I'm sure there are several viewers, you know, all around the world. But as uh, someone who lives in America, you know, some of these animals are completely foreign to me. And it's fascinating to get to, you know, get a little peek of them and see what they do, what their habits are. And polar bears are very beautiful creatures. Um and just having some, a way to sort of get to observe them for uh, periods of time is really amazing. And, I mean, just looking at this uh, camera for the uh, San Diego Zoo, it makes me want to go and explore uh, these places and really get to experience these animals. Um, you know, actually, fun fact, as a young man, I actually did spend some time at my local zoo. Um, and I, I really got to learn a lot about um, the local aviary and even the process of, 
um, how they take care of the sea lions through a uh, volunteer program. It was really fascinating. Um, and that's a whole story that I definitely want to talk to you guys about in the future. But what I want to share is the honest benefits of these live streamed, uh, animals, uh, specifically about awareness and about just human intrigue. Because how often can you say, oh, um, I got to watch a bear hunt for its food, or I got to watch, uh, the social habits of the baboons. I'm like, that's really fascinating. Um, It doesn't always guarantee success, and it's not always eventful, but getting to see the baboons in their social economy uh, is really fascinating to me. Uh, You know, these are the kind of animals that you definitely do not want to have living in your house because uh, these these, uh, creatures here, they they pack a bit of a punch, uh, baboons specifically. Uh, Baboons, uh, as... Again, part of the volunteer program, I did get a fair time with uh, some of the uh, simians and uh, simians and chimps are not the same thing. (laughs) But uh, I did get to learn a fair bit about them and they were very fascinating. And the way that uh, primates can actually like uh, the difference between humans and primates is so narrow that it's actually really fascinating that the treatments for them, you have to be very cautious because a lot of the sicknesses that humans can have can transfer over to uh, primates as well. So it's really, really amazing how much care they have to give each and every one of these creatures. Um, the Cincinnati, the, uh, um, excuse me, the San Diego Zoo is actually really fascinating because they have, uh, let's see here, they have here the Hamadras baboon troop, I believe. Hamadryas? Uh, it's really fascinating. Uh, this is definitely something I wouldn't see near my hometown. Uh, that's why I find these uh, places so fascinating. Um, you know, you, you go in there and you'll learn about, uh, you know, you, you will learn about ringtail lemurs, orangutans, uh, you know, sea lions, otters, uh, and of course, polar bears, penguins, and all of them. It's really fascinating that these animals are there. And then you start to wonder, though, uh, is this good? Uh, is this good for these these creatures? I personally believe that uh, the camera setup, the camera setup is great. And if you get the chance to invest in looking at some camera setups for other animals, I they're all over the internet. They're definitely worth looking at because it's while cat videos are really great on the internet, getting to experience nature of other animals. Uh, even uh, special needs animals too, you know, maybe something like a rehabilitating animal, dog, cat. That's also a really great experience uh, to get to learn about. And I can talk about all my experiences with them, but that's neither here nor there. It will be in the future. Uh, but for right now, uh, the, the animals that we do get to observe, especially through the zoos, um, are really fascinating and really beneficial to uh, individuals as well. And I really hope that some more of these kind of items can be implemented so that way people don't actually disturb the natural habitat of some of these creatures. Because as curious as we are as people, we tend to also intrude a lot on nature. And that is definitely not something we should be doing at this day and age um, just because of how much we've done. But definitely getting to see something like a polar bear and uh, sort of its natural habitat is great. Um, And that's something interesting I find about zoos. And I really should emphasize there's a a difference between a zoo and a nature institute um, that I really need to explain at some point. Um, But it's definitely necessary to know the difference because there's a huge stigma against zoos that – most people don't even know about um and that's why it's really important for anyone young old to know this difference um but i'll get to that in just a bit what i do want to talk about now is the amazingness that is the baboon cam right now if you get a moment to go talk uh, check it out uh so the baboon cam is just really cool because you just sometimes see like random uh droves of baboons and other primates just like kind of stroming across the camera and it's really cool because like getting to see their motions up close like this is really amazing uh (laughs) it's pretty cool and it also gives you a small inside view to the life of what, what it's like inside of a zoo um and then it's also a matter of, is this good? Is this bad? 
I can tell you right now, it's it's pretty amazing. It's amazing to get to see animals in this habitat, but is it good for them? That's yet to be said. Now, the penguin habitat, you know, as cute as penguins are, they don't do too much. Uh, you know, honestly, they, they're not completely, you know, energetic animals unless there is some incentive. But they're very adorable animals. But I'll tell you right now, they don't make good pets. They are not good pets. Um, and that's sort of the purpose of a zoo is to get you to understand that. The difference between an animal that should be considered a pet and that shouldn't. Uh, just because you see a rich person owning a, I don't know, a ocelot, uh, doesn't mean that that you obviously need to go out and get one. Uh, it really isn't good, um, because that's one thing a lot of people need to go visit zoos for is to learn the distinction between a zoo and a uh, animal rehabilitation center or an animal institute. But that's something we'll get to in just a little bit. For right now, uh, we're going to have another word for our sponsors, but thanks for sticking around and give us just a moment while we have these messages presented to you. Thank you. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. we just talked about how a lot of zoos and even some other places have implemented these really amazing cameras that allow you to sort of peek into the natural life of certain animals, animals you might not get to see very often. Uh, and I personally think these are really great ideas, only if they're implemented in a good way, only if they are uh, used educationally because some people try to use these kind of things for uh, money or they'll try to use them for uh, just personal gain and that's really not a great practice obviously but it also then begs the question uh, how good are zoos or rather what's the danger of a zoo what are zoos bad are zoos not bad um, so I can't answer that in a definite yes or no because there's no uh, definitive yes or no for that. It really depends on how the uh, place presents itself. If the place is presenting itself as a zoo, come one, come all, come see the freakish big brooding gorilla and watch it do tricks, then yes, no, that is that is not the kind of place you uh, should be donating money to. Whereas um, places, uh, especially like... Um, zoos that have active wildlife rehabilitation that um, don't exploit animals but rather try to uh, help animals um, recuperate from injury or uh, serious uh, you know trauma then that's the kind of place you should be uh, looking into um, there are a lot of small places that try to pass off as a zoo but, or a rehab center but they're not um, and there are also places that try to um, really pass themselves off as a fun educational place but in reality they do a lot of uh, really unselling trick shows i've seen places that do a lot of tricks um involving you know uh elephants uh 
uh, it, much like a circus, you know, circuses that used to make elephants balance on, you know, big balls or stuff like that. That's, that's not the kind of place we should, uh, really be sending your money to. Whereas, uh, in my own local, uh, in my own local area, our zoo is actually not called a zoo. People instinctively call it a zoo, but it's actually a nature institute. Uh, and I love the place simply because everything is relatively left unchanged aside from, um, obviously keeping serious predators away from, uh, animals that could be considered prey. And, um, other than that, it's relatively a standard as people would think zoo, but it's more like a, it's a place for the animals to live. There's a lot of decent space for a lot of the animals, um, and the animals are well taken care of. They don't take in animals that wouldn't do well in this environment or in this area. So some animals, like for example, uh, river otters, uh, they don't bring in like deep sea otters or, you know, polar otters. They don't bring in animals like polar bla- bears that would have like a difficult climate shift. Um, rather because it's very warm where I'm from, they actually like to bring in, ooh, they actually like to bring in, um, animals that would do well in this environment and require very little change. Uh, that's a really smart idea. Um, and a lot of the animals they do bring in are animals that are being rehabilitated or can't be returned to the wild. So if a bear or a sea lion is there, they're not holding it for tricks. Rather, they are bringing the animal in because it's been damaged, it's been hurt, it's uh, it's unable to return to the wild, uh, but they're able to rehabilitate it to where it can still live its life semi-normally in captivity, and it'll live longer, and if you know things go well, perhaps get into a decent breeding program, uh, especially if it's an animal that is uh, on the endangered or uh, threatened list, which is definitely a list people need to be aware of as well, because there are a lot of animals that I'm sure you are unaware of that are on this list, and it may be one of your favorites. <clears throat> but nonetheless to say, um, you should definitely take some time to learn the differences, um, if you have a local quote zoo and you don't know much about what it does, definitely take some time to look into, uh, what some of its, uh, outside of zoo activities, do they have any, uh, do they have any, uh, rehabilitation or conservation? Uh, if so, it's definitely something you should definitely consider, um, looking into, uh, cause I can tell you right now, a lot of these animals, despite how friendly they are, they're not pets. Um, and that's one thing that a lot of zookeepers always need to keep in mind. They're not our pets. They're wild animals, but they have been adjusted to captivity enough to where we can manage them and give them a decent life. Um, I myself, uh, some time ago was involved in a volunteer program and, um, I got to deal with some wild animals, uh, some, uh, vultures actually, uh, not super aggressive birds, but when they are, they are pretty intimidating, um, and they're very amazing animals, but again, this isn't a zoo where all the animals are taught tricks or anything. They're given enough space to roam, and they're also given their own territory. So, if you get in their territory and they don't like you, then you're, they're, you're not in the, they're not in the wrong, you're in the wrong. And that's what's fascinating about these animals. You know, um, these are animals you could see anywhere in your home area, you know, large birds, sometimes they're going to be, um, you know, maybe like wild boars or stuff. You'll see them around and, uh, they're fascinating animals, but they are not pets. Uh, heck, I actually had a friend who, um, saved a wild piglet or perhaps it was a wild boar at the time, but it was still a piglet. Um, and they saved it and they raised it for a little while, but the thing grew, so fast and got so big that they had to send it off because it would not live in, it would not do well in the suburbs. That thing could probably bust through a fence and probably, uh, really hurt someone's dog or a kid. So some of these animals aren't well suited for pets, despite how cute a pig can be, or despite how fascinating a certain type of bird can be. These babies aren't really suited to be pets but that's why the beauty of nature institutes or as people still call them zoos are they're not 
really it depends on the quality of the place but they're great for animals that need to get a second chance or uh to help educate people as well uh conservation is a very important topic that a lot of people don't know too much about and really should but when it comes to animals that could be considered uh pets it still is best to consult these kind of uh professionals on that topic uh, so definitely do some research on your local uh, zoo or nature institute. Find out what they offer. A lot of times they offer free or they'll offer, you know, sometimes weekend classes or events to really learn. Um, and it's honestly a really great topic uh, to help learn about the distinction between what is and isn't a pet, but also to learn more about these animals because people don't know enough about animals to know what is or isn't a seriously wild animal or an animal that uh is a threat to you uh or what is or isn't a vermin or what is or isn't uh a super dangerous animal and i think that's something i we should definitely talk about uh coming up soon uh i would like to share just some ideas about uh animals you should keep an eye out for uh they probably wouldn't be considered pets but they also wouldn't really be considered pests uh if you know how to handle them and what isn't a good way to handle them but I will tell you right now, um, we've definitely come a long way when it comes to zoos and uh, animal enclosures. Um, and when was the last time you really have visited a zoo? Uh, has it been longer than a year? Has it been longer than four years? Uh, you really should take some time to go out there. It's relaxing and it's honestly worth it if your uh, facility does help with animal conservation or protection. But... Either way, uh, we're going to go for another quick commercial break. Uh, and in this time, why don't you think about how long has it been since you visited a zoo? And coming up, we'll talk more about some other animals that maybe don't belong in a zoo, but also definitely don't belong in your house as a pet. But until then, stay tuned and please enjoy these messages. Is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. talked about zoos are they good are they bad what exactly is the status of them well zoos definitely have changed over time and most zoos are now also classified as nature institutes uh, a lot of times they'll have things such as conservation or rehabilitation centers for animals that are from the wild injured uh, perhaps trauma a lot of situations by both nature and man that uh, could have caused them to be taken out of their home and now they can either have a chance at new life after healed or they can be simply kept at the zoo because they are unable to be returned to nature unfortunately it happens uh, sometimes by us as man or by nature itself uh, due to traumatic or you know just unforeseen you know acts of nature uh, it's just the way life is but one thing we haven't really talked about are animals that are they considered pets or not or are they animals we should really um condone are they pests are they not uh animals like vermin or animals that would be considered vermin or pests um are definitely interesting ones that don't get very much spotlight on but uh definitely deserve some attention um you know animals like raccoons or perhaps even um you know Opossums. Uh, these are interesting animals that people consider just vermin. They want dead. They want gone. They think they're useless. But that's not entirely true. Uh, these animals are fascinating creatures. 
uh, the way that they live are interesting. You know, they're not exactly hurting anyone. They're only considered a nuisance to us as people because they get in our way, but at the same time, we get in their way. So, are these animals bad? Are they pets? Are they not? Um, well, for starters, I'm going to come straight out and say it. Uh, these animals really aren't pets, and they shouldn't be considered pets for most most regards, simply because they're not necessarily good for being domesticated. Um, it's not impossible to domesticate them, but it's something that we really shouldn't be looking to do. Uh, if you've actually taken the time, and I'm sure with the release of a lot of, you know, movies, uh, or anything that might, you know, uh, glamorize some of these animals, I know, you know, uh, Rocket Raccoon is probably one of my favorite Marvel characters, but it doesn't mean you need to go out and catch a raccoon and name it Rocket, and then, uh, have fun with it. You know, sometimes you may see some social media accounts that have animals involved with them, maybe you've seen a raccoon named Rocky, or... Uh, you know, you see a lot of these kind of, um, characters, um, on social media, and that's not necessarily the whole story if you're only looking at it from the surface. Um, raccoons, they're scavenging animals, they're relatively omnivores, they'll eat most things, um, but they are not dangerous by any means. They're very, um, they're very sensible animals, and they... By any means, they're not really pets, um, but they do definitely deserve as much attention and respect as even some of the big animals that we see in places like zoos or aquariums, um, and especially the other animal we should look at, possums. Um, so possums are, I, I really recently discovered a lot about possums um, just due to some friends and due to some interesting circumstance. Um, but I've gotten my chance to really get to meet and learn more about possums hands-on, and I find they are really fascinating creatures, uh, that actually do a lot for us as people that we don't even realize. However, most people just see them as giant rats, or as vermin who get into our trash and eat stuff. Well, that's only partly true. Uh, a good news is that they are omnivores, so they can, uh, they can eat just about anywhere and anything. Uh, it doesn't mean they should, because not everything's good for them, but then again, who are we to judge, because we eat just about anything and everything. But, possums are fascinating to me, because, well, they are little, uh, they're scaredy little creatures. They are, as I like to call anxiety the animal, because they're small, they have literally no, like, next to no, uh... I guess, attacking or, uh, you know, any real way to hurt anybody. They, they can bite, but yet most things can. Their teeth aren't incredibly sharp, and they don't really have claws. In fact, possums have opposable thumbs, and it's really jarring at first, but then it's really amazing to get to see. Um, they have prehensile tails, much like a uh, monkey's tail. And um, here's just some interesting facts. Um, they can't get rabies. Possums are actually immune to rabies. So, you know, that whole thought process that, oh, if you see a possum, but there's their way, it might have rabies, might infect you. Uh, no, they, they can't get rabies. Um, that they're aggressive animals. No, no, they, they are not aggressive animals. They just pretend to be aggressive, uh, to try to scare off intruders. And it might work on most people, but in reality, they are absolutely, like, they are pretty much harmless. Um, but they're very fascinating. Um, I, I myself know someone who, uh, does own a possum, not because it's a pet, but because the person is a rehabilitator who rehabilitates plenty of animals in their free time. And their possum is one of their, um, stars of the brand simply because rehabilitating does cost money. And sometimes they need to have an animal that they can really sell to everybody as hey this is what this is and i really think you guys should take a moment to look at this um sure you know you can go anywhere and find dogs or cats birds um even horses as really great companions um but animals like possums and raccoons are basically these little introverts that 
only get by by whatever they can and they mean next to no harm you know uh are they getting in my trash can and you know making a mess yeah but guess what your kid will do that too the second they uh get tall enough to reach the top of the trash can uh but it's very fascinating and if we took a moment just to kind of appreciate what these little things can do uh they actually do help us a lot more than uh they hurt us eating a lot of the bugs and um just little vermin they actually opossums they love eating ticks and they'll eat probably like about 3,000 ticks a day uh, when they can get their hands on them. So they actually do that favor for us. So if you ever go on a nature hike and uh, you never got bit by a tick, there's probably a possum nearby. <laughs> uh, but are these little guys cute? Yes, they are super cute. They are adorable animals uh, who mean no harm. Uh, and in my complete opinion, opossums are uh, anxiety uh, personified. Uh, they're small, they can't do much, they are scared of everything, uh, they look like they scream at everything because they don't know how to cope with it, so they actually are very adorable animals, um, they mean no harm, they're very sweet, but at the same time, uh, we should just leave them alone, uh, you know, if you do see one, the best thing you can ever do is leave it alone, or maybe just scoot it somewhere else, uh, just because, you know, I know I would be upset if I'm personally scared about any and everything and then something bigger comes along and tries to – is scared of me. You know, I'm big uh, by comparison and then something else just smaller than me, I'm scared of it. You know, we're people. You know, we we uh, don't realize how vast the animal kingdom is but, you know, we have the tools and the smarts to really, you know, do something about that. But little possums, they don't mean any harm. They they are very interesting creatures that uh, really a lot of people should take more time to appreciate. Um, you know, myself included, took some time to really appreciate them. But other than that, what are the animals that we uh, should be looking at, that we should really give our attention to? And what are some of the ways we can give these animals attention without, uh, you know, being completely selfish about it? It's a, it's an interesting topic that I want to discuss with you guys. Uh, but either way, we're going to take a quick another break because uh, much like a possum, I need to go scream at something for a bit. So please enjoy these commercials and we'll be back soon. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Travel Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. back i hope you enjoyed those messages so we previously talked about animals that don't really belong in a zoo but definitely don't belong in your house either but that doesn't mean they're not helpful little creatures and could be good friends in some ways so creatures like raccoons and possums definitely are little friends but they're not little friends that you should be putting on a leash and dressing up like a little ballerina bows in the hair are a no-no See, raccoons and possums actually have very, very helpful places in the world for keeping the balance of the ecosystem, and they just really wouldn't do that well in captivity. Now, there are several people who uh, do help rehabilitate these little folks, and you can actually find out more information about that uh, relatively anywhere. I could name a few places as well, uh, such as uh, uh, It's Me, Sesame the Possum, and uh wildlife rehab uh i could definitely get you some more of that information but 
also keep in mind that these are wild animals who require very special uh treatment who require very special uh you know health problems that honestly most modern vets aren't able to take care of but now let's talk about animals that you know you love and definitely make good pets but what are the right ones to look for so when it comes to pets specifically dogs cats uh birds uh reptilian or uh equestrian and i'm talking about horses so these kind of animals they they probably will be your best friend for life uh they will be some of the best companionship you'll ever have i know definitely has been mine and when it comes to these kind of animals it also comes down to the matter of where do you find your animals um you know a lot of people want that perfect dog uh or you know they're looking for a very specific breed and then that's where i immediately stop and really think to myself what perfect breed there's no perfect breed of person just like there's no perfect breed of animal sure some people may want a uh hunting dog like a bloodhound or something for if they do a lot of hunting work that's one thing um but if you're looking for a best friend you're looking for an animal to sort of really make a connection with you don't make friends you make friends <laughs> you, you can't see my air quotes but there were several air quotes in that in that conversation right there um <laughs> but when it comes to say adopting a dog or cat uh it's 10 times better to adopt a animal rather than simply going and buying them I myself recently had the same dilemma when it came to looking into uh, birds and avian friends uh, because I learned of a local aviary near my home that I didn't know was there uh, as opposed to walking into a store and seeing the 20 to 40 uh, parakeets and such that were in cages at a pet store. And, you know, something was off to me the more I kept staring at them, which they were adorable animals, but then I'm like, where are they coming from? Why are there so many of them like this? What is... This doesn't seem right. And then when it hit me that, well, we don't make babies in mass and then put them in a baby window and then let people pick out their perfect baby. We have babies and we raise them, you know, and sometimes there are also children that we, you know, we raise in adoption or we raise for children who need love too so a lot of these children and i say children in air quotes um small animals that we see a lot of times there are little perfectly fine animals that just get put in a cage simply because no one wants them because they want to buy the perfect little teacup or they want to find a corgi that's been bred several times over and while they are adorable animals it's such a i don't want to say disgusting but it's such a unsettling process of breeding for sale uh simply because you're creating for the sake of profit Whereas there are several creatures out there who are just as loving, who are just as uh, in need of love in a home as any uh, other animal. And people pass them up simply because they are mutts or because they don't have a purebred uh, paperwork. It's, it's a very odd situation that a lot of people have been put in with this particular topic. And it's even difficult for me as someone who um, <clears throat> has only owned one or two pets. But when I learn more about animals, I also find some really unfortunate truths about animals, even local animals and such. Um, so if you as an individual consider anything involving animals, specifically dogs and cats, uh, definitely consider adopting rather than shopping. Adopt, don't shop. Um, for animals, not that there's anything wrong with, oh, well, I want this kind of dog, fine, but don't go out of your way to pay $500,000, $2,000, because it does happen very frequently, for a dog that looks a certain way. Uh, you know, there are plenty of great dogs that, you know, aren't going to have the look, but they're going to be just as loving 
and might love you even more than that little dog that you just paid all that money for, but it has a nice shiny coat. I mean, it's a very touchy subject for me personally. Uh, I've been the owner of a uh, adopted dog uh, for so many years, and best dog I essentially had, great little dude. Um, and, you know, same with cats, you know, you can't put a price on the love they give, but you shouldn't also put a price on their life either. You know, I, I know you may go to an adoption agency and pay a few, be a hundred or two for them, but that's because you're paying for the, the care they've been given. Uh, that's, that's, that's the care they've been given for, um, a lot of stuff that they need, you know, if they've been given their shots, if they've been given um, a lot of their uh, basic needs in the adoption shelter, and it's to help keep those places open. Uh, and shelters are great. You know, not every shelter is perfect, but at the same pl- instance, you know, not every uh, not every business you go to, not every um, hospital you go to is going to be great. Uh so ultimately, you know, just definitely consider as you continue forward and look into animals, even with uh, reptiles or birds or uh, even horses, uh, try not to look for exclusively breeders, but look for um, animals that are in need of a home. If you really do care about animals, um, you know, if you've been listening this whole time and you care about, you know, zoo animals, you care about the difference between a zoo and a nature institute. Uh, if you care about a lot of these topics, it's definitely something to consider because animals are living creatures and, you know, we as people have had a history of trading life for life, but we haven't had a history of, say, you know, recently we, we haven't really considered, well, uh, they're animals, they're friends, so, you know, they, they, we've, we've had this mentality that they are just sort of property when it's not entirely the case and they deserve just as much love as we want and love you put in with them is the kind of love you'll definitely get out from them because I'll tell you right now those little guys will love you so much and probably more than that little you know manufacturedly bred um purebred or that uh you know bred hypoallergenic um Siamese cat you know it's 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 I understand people's needs but I also understand that it it doesn't always justify the means and animals are such a interesting and touchy subject that uh we as people just need to treat a little more carefully like we would anything else um but with that being said uh I definitely know that you guys I hope you guys have been enjoying uh, and in order to keep everything afloat, uh, we're going to have some friends or rather some friends who like to advertise at you for just a moment longer. So, uh, please stay tuned for some more great advertisements and we'll be right back with some more really great information about animals, pets, and what you should be looking for. And I hope you guys enjoy. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. I hope you guys enjoyed those messages. So we talk about a lot of things today, guys, and I got to say, I've really enjoyed it. I hope you've all learned a little bit from something today. I know I sure have. And one thing that I think to really take from all of this is that 
animals are truly amazing. They range in size, species,、uh, location, and there's always a little something to know about them. There's a little something we can learn about them, and honestly, that's always my goal when it comes to animals is to try to learn something a little bit new.、Um, so, with that being said, though. Uh, one of the biggest things as people that we can do is really take the time to learn and observe, and that's something I want to bring to you guys today before we end today's、uh, well episode. And with that, I'm going to give you guys my top five animals that you guys can watch at home. Now,、uh, these do vary, and it's more of a personal opinion, but this is from my personal experience things that I've found to be incredibly interesting to watch over time. And honestly,、uh, you can get some fun with this too if you have kids, or maybe if you are a kid, or maybe you're just an adult who loves animals. Here's a few little things you can do, probably in your own backyard, and honestly, it won't really、uh, disrupt much at all, and you'll probably get some enjoyment out of it. <clears throat> Without further ado,、uh, at number five, I left it pretty simple. Um, and after that, aquatic animals, mainly things like、uh, if you have a small pond nearby. This one is a little more specific to that, but let's just say if you have a small pond anywhere nearby, maybe at a park or maybe just nearby, you have a、uh, small body of water.、Um, fish, turtles,、uh, and if you're really lucky, you might find yourself some frogs.、Uh, these are really interesting animals that you can watch over time. Uh, you know, the only downside is that you will need to be near water, and that can be difficult if you aren't near any of that. But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with、uh, finding a nice little body of water and just spending some time there, looking in the water.、Um, some little snacks or stuff you can bring in. I recommend、um, small pieces of fruit.、Uh, try to avoid bringing bread, but you can bring in some maybe、uh, fruits or. Uh, you could even get some、um, if you're really brave enough. You can go ahead and buy yourself some、uh, bugs、um, at a bait shop and go ahead and feed some fish for a little while.、Uh, there is nothing wrong with bread for most animals, but when it comes to、uh, birds, specifically like ducks,、uh, it's best to stay away.、Uh, you can probably get some nuts too、uh, if you want to just kind of feed some for a little while. It's definitely a better alternative. Uh, but fish and aquatic animals are definitely an interesting way to go、uh, for observing. Now, again, they are still limited to that one environment, but it can still be a lot of fun. Number four on the list is a little bit of the opposite.、Uh, these can be found just about everywhere, but they also require a lot of bravery to、uh, spend time with. But if you're down for it,、uh, insects. Insects are incredibly fascinating, although they Technically, don't qualify as animals, and more of those air quotes right here. They still are living creatures you can observe, and just like animals, like birds or cats or dogs, get bred for、uh, buying use.、Uh, so do insects quite frequently. Spiders,、um, <clears throat> spiders, scorpions. A lot of、uh, more foreign animals get bred, and、uh, we don't need any of that. But you can easily find a lot of very fascinating insects. Uh, in your backyard,、um, you know, maybe if you want to overturn some rocks, or perhaps you find like an interesting insect. I know I've run into a couple mantises, or even a very rare chance where I've seen like lightning bugs in my yard. Those are just really cool to get to watch and observe for a while.、Um, and you can definitely find a lot of things if you just take some time、uh, and you have the、uh, the tough skin for it. Because、uh, let's face it. Bugs sometimes give me the creepies, but on rare occasions I see them. I do like to watch bugs,、uh, and you might really get an appreciation for them if you find the right kind.、Um, but I definitely would recommend taking some time to go、uh, investigate some bugs.、Uh, number three on my list is a bit more of an interesting one and might require a little more work,、uh, especially because these guys are a little more nocturnal. But if you are willing to invest in the time. Then I would highly recommend maybe a nighttime camera,、uh, scattering some fruits and veggies out in the backyard, and just let that camera sit overnight and record yourself some raccoons.、Uh, if you're lucky, you might also find possibly some、uh, small foxes as well. But mainly raccoons、uh, will come more closer to、uh, residential areas if there is food lying around. Uh, now this is also a double-edged sword because the more raccoons are to come around, the more likely they could be to get into trash bins or、uh, into places they shouldn't be. 
So what I would highly recommend is making sure you got something nice and heavy weighing down your trash bins um, and perhaps even like, you know, putting them somewhere they sh- they uh, will be safe. But uh, scattering a few uh, fruits and veggies, allowing them to kind of explore your yard, let them know you have a safe place. And uh, they'd be really fun to catch on camera and just to really get to see how they socialize and what they're able to do. Um, And if you're looking for a slightly different alternative, um, go ahead and maybe scatter some food during the daytime and you might get some more squirrels, uh, get some seeds, some nuts, uh, unsalted nuts in your backyard and you probably get more squirrels coming to your yard as well. Squirrels are really interesting to watch. Uh, However, squirrels are way more skittish than raccoons and you'll probably uh, be getting a lot of them climbing up your poles and stuff. But on to number two, uh, similar to raccoons, I also say possums. Uh, possums are a little bit of a difference because, uh, although they can be found in a lot of places as well, um, they are more skittish animals and, well, unlike poss- unlike raccoons that, uh, like to get into trash very frequently, uh, possums, uh, don't typically do the trash digging that raccoons do, uh, but the re- that's why I find possums a little more interesting. They're more foragers and... Uh, they can do a lot of very interesting things, and they're really fascinating to watch over a course of time if you manage to see some. Uh, I myself do get possums in my yard very frequently, and they love fruits, um, they love nuts and seeds. Um, I don't recommend throwing out too many odd things, but fruits and vegetables and maybe occasionally some chicken, uh, because possums are omnivores and, uh, they do eat meat. Uh, but give them some light chickens. I say, uh, just a little bit of chicken, they'd be great. And they really are fascinating. Um, and that's number two on the list. Uh, but I also recommend, uh, just being cautious, maybe occasionally some food bowls or uh, some water bowls. They might come around frequently. Uh, you might think, well, are these making them into pests? Uh, not entirely. I mean, uh, animals like these need to eat too. And if you're in a safe enough area, you could really get some time to observe some really fascinating animals that, you know, people tend to write off as vermin or disgusting. But finally, for number one on my list, probably one of the most interesting animals to watch in general and uh, an animal that you can see just about in most places. Get yourself some shelled unsalted peanuts, some grapes, and a nice uh, open area, and you can get yourself some crows. Um, So what you need to do to kind of get some... uh, ways to observe these guys is make sure there's a small amount of them already. Uh, crows are intre- incredibly, incredibly intelligent, and they will definitely pick up on your habits very quickly, as uh, so long as they understand what you're doing. Um, you know, you can't be super abrasive with them because crows, unlike possums or raccoons, which are skittish by nature, crows are more suspicious by nature, and if they feel something's wrong, uh, then they'll remember that something is definitely wrong. But they are incredibly social creatures, fascinating to watch, um, and definitely something that if you want to observe animals, you want this to be a family activity, you want to have an interesting... Uh, an interesting hobby. It's definitely the way to go. Get some bird feeders, get plenty of seeds. Um, fun fact though, crows actually really love shelled peanuts. They do not like them open for them simply because they like the challenge of getting to open said peanuts and it's honestly a sight to watch. But either way, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Thank you for listening to the GSMC Pets Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I like to ask that you please remember to subscribe to the show and write a nice review. It really helps us out. Also, if you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'd like to thank you and have a good night. You've been listening to the GSMC Pets Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all of the shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, from business news to weird news. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's podcast.